Fast forward, if you will, please, to the story of the birth of Jesus. What do we have? We've got Mary, we are told in the story, becomes pregnant through the visitation of the Holy Spirit. And before Joseph knows anything about this, the village starts to notice that Mary is pregnant. And so somebody comes to Joseph and informs him. And when that somebody informs him, we are told that Joseph decides to not expose Mary, which means she would then be condemned as an immoral woman and she would be stoned to death. He decides to put her away quietly because he is a just man. What does justice mean for him? It's not equal application of law. He sees Mary as exhausted and broken, and he is going to not break that bruised reed, and he's not going to puff out that dimly burning wicket. He will faithfully bring forth justice. We've got a new definition of justice. Then the text says, while he was, now we translate it, reflecting on this matter. The verb itself means while he was very deeply troubled over this matter. We have translated it that way for centuries, I think because Joseph becomes Saint Joseph and you can't have Saint Joseph troubled and so you gotta have him just reflecting. But hey Joe, your fiance got pregnant. I think I will reflect on this matter. No, no, I mean he's really upset. But, and this is all before he knows that this is a miracle of God. Why did he decide that he has to go beyond the definition of equal application of law to a higher level of what justice is all about? He got it out of the servant songs. If he was not a theologian, in the sense of having absorbed into the inner core of his being the definition we are here talking about, Jesus would never have been born. We are told he will faithfully bring forth justice. Why does the cross and the resurrection release into history the kind of power which it does and which it has and which it continues to do? It's because Jesus was faithful unto death. He absorbed the evil around him and in the absorption of it, it died and thereby his death and his resurrection became a life-changing power released into society. And in smaller form, in seed form, we have all of that theology reflected in this story before us. The text goes on. And in the middle of the second section of this Isaiah 42, we read the following, and we'll look at it on the screen. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sat in darkness. This is what this servant of Yahweh is going to do. It's really quite an amazing text because it starts off by saying, I have given you as a covenant to the people. Now, what is a covenant? Well, a covenant is a bunch of words which you write down on a piece of paper and everybody signs. We're going to accept this and you do it and I do it and there are penalties if you break it. That's what a covenant is. Covenants then, because they get written down, they become documents and those documents become very important and that's fine. But here we're told that I have given you as a covenant. The covenant is no longer words on a piece of paper. The covenant has now become a person. The word of God is no longer something you write down and publish in a book. The word of God now starts walking around and talking to us. Jesus himself becomes the word of God and thereby what he says and does become important to us because this is the word made flesh and dwelling among us. And what's he going to do? Well, we're told, first of all, he is going to be a light to the nations, to the goyim. There we've got that again. This is a message, a message that goes out from the life of Jesus and his cross and his resurrection to the world. 
So this is proclamation of a message. And the second thing, to open the eyes of the blind. We can call this compassion. And the third thing is to bring the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. And we can call this justice advocacy. And when properly balanced, and you reflect back across history, clear up until our day, since the time of the birth of, and life of Jesus, what is the ministry of the church all about?